Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. You are now flying. Shine early grind, recognize I'm certified. Twelve tribes worldwide, don't act like you ain't heard about it. I'm a young kind of fly, Babylon traumatized, hit the block, prophesy. Hit me when you down the ride, nigga. Tell me now how you figure. You rob me for everything and then break me down to a nickel. Red clay be the dirt in them shackles, the iron nigga. System made to enslave an intelligent mind, nigga. Listen, I got crumbs of LED. If Christ, if Christ really came to die for everybody, think about it. Why would they want him to put him to death? Why would they hang him on the cross for teaching them? You would be loved by everybody, right? Everybody should be one. Everybody. That's... He came here for who? He came for his nation. And what nation put him to death? The other nations. Herod. They're the ones that put him on the on Pilate. Pilate gave the decree to hang him. And it was of our own people. That's why we don't say it's not about color because it was of our own people that hated him for teaching what? He was a nationalist. That's right. He taught the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that the kingdom of heaven is for you. Huh. Now, can I ask you something? Did you go to church? Did you go to churches? How did we get the kingdom of heaven? What does that mean? So what did Christ do? Give me Matthew 19. He gave his life for his nation. I like that, for his nation. But listen, he gives you the answer to what you must do to get the kingdom of heaven. Now tell me if this has ever been taught in your churches. Read. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good things shall I do? But now think about it. If you had Jesus Christ walking amongst you, right? Think about it. And you can ask Jesus Christ, what do I got to do specifically to get the kingdom of heaven? That's a million dollar question, right? Why? Because you know that he has the keys to heaven, right? Let's see what he answered this man. That I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, why, Christ answered that man that asked the question. why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Now in your church, have you been taught the commandments of God? Are you sure? You think so? What about you? You said, you said maybe at this point you don't know, right? We don't know, right? Did you know that they didn't teach you the commandments? You want to know how I know? What's your nationality? What's your father? So you would be from the same tribe as my sister right here. You would be from the tribe of Judah. If your church didn't tell you what tribe you come from or teach your nationality, they didn't teach you laws. You can't teach the laws without acting, without first acknowledging the nationality. Because the only thing that's going to make us keep the laws is understanding that we're bound to the laws because if we break the laws, what's going to happen to us? Curses come upon us. So that's the first thing you got to know is your nationality. You understand? So let's get some laws, right? Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Actually, stop. Don't get Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 18. Something that they never told you right now. What's it represent? How? Now, can I ask y'all something real quick? Your son, right? If your son or anybody you love, no husband or whatever, was put to death, whether it be by a gun, lethal injection, or hung by a noose, you know what a noose is? Hung from a tree. Would you put that on to represent his love? No, right? So why do we put a cross to represent Christ if that's what they used to put him to death? You know what that is? That's idolatry. That's that was a form of capital punishment that's around Janet. 
But you know why you don't know it? Because we learned the Bible from this man right here. Remember I told you earlier what they was doing? When you look at this right here, watch this. Look at this, sis. If you can see this right now, I want y'all to see this. What color is Christ right there? No, right here. What color is he right there? Right there. What color is he? He's a black man. What is he doing right here? This is a real image. What is he doing? No, look what he's painting. What color is he painting? So why would he change the image of Christ? And then they're changing the image of Christ. Guess what they also did? They changed the doctrine and say, for all people can be saved. But since you just found out that Christ said what? He came to die for his nation. And if Christ was a black man, did y'all know Christ was a black man? If Christ was a black man and his nation is, my sisters, you, us right here, why would they change his image to white? Bring it out. Why would they do that? You know what that cross represents on your neck? Death. Everywhere that cross is, there's death that follows it. That's right. Everywhere you see a Christian church, look at the surrounding area in the hood. Look at the surrounding area. What comes from it? Nothing. You came out of the Christian church. What came from it? Have you benefited in your life? Or did you just find out that you are still under the curses? That you're still under the curses, right? And why? Because we don't know God's laws. One of God's laws is in Habakkuk 2 and 18. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 18. What profit profited the graven image? What profit the graven image? That's a graven image around your neck. Right? That the maker thereof hath graven it. Uh -huh. The molten image in a teacher of lies. That image that around your neck is sin. It's sin according to the Bible as a teacher of lies. So what is repentance? Changing your ways. What should you do with that cross around your neck? You should say, God, people keep the chain. But the cross, don't keep that on you. That's part of the reason why we went. That is the main reason why we went into captivity. Right. Idolatry. Right. Idolatry. Yes. So what can you do today to repent? <laughs> oh, you can set yourself down here. Huh? We are. And the Bible says that in Psalms 82 and 6. But in order to come back to being God's, what must we do? What, what you see the sister doing right now? What you see the sister doing right now? You can keep the chain, the necklace, the, the, the pendant. You can take that pendant and you can fold it. This is what you got to do to come back to the nationality. Then you do around the 22 and 5. And we got to just know our role, man. We got to know our role, too. I'll pray to the most high, sis. That was a sin, that's sincere repentance right there. That's right. That's sincere repentance. Right. Now you can take that cross and you can throw it. I don't want it. You can throw it. <laughs> I don't want it. There you go. There you go, sis. Give me Deuteronomy 4, 2 or 5. 22 or 5. Watch this, Izzy. That's just something you can do to repent too. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. It says the woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Right? Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So if I was up here in a dress, how would you look at me? You, I like how you said it. Crazy, right? If I'm in a dress, I look crazy, right? But if a woman is wearing what? She looks crazy to me. What's men's clothes? Pants. 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 It's a spirit that comes with a woman wearing pants. And that's why God said don't do it. You understand? So what must y'all wear? How much y'all dress? A dress. Why is God telling you to dress? Why is God telling you to put on a dress? To be more feminine, to be what? Modest. Why do we have a lot of single parent households out here? Why do women wear pants? When women put on pants, they don't put on loose fitted pants. What do they put on? Tight fitted pants to show off what? To show off everything, right? And what happens from that? You start attracting what? You're just throwing a big net out there and just pulling in any old Tom Dick and Harry. And what happens from that? You get single parent, unless you are 100% on point and you get single parent households from that. All from the way that you dress and it puts a, a masculine spirit upon you. But what's the role of the woman in the Bible? Feminine, but do we see that today? No, do we see that today, sister? No, right? This is the role of the woman. Now listen to this, sis. 
Verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. You have to adorn yourself in modest apparel. Adorn means beautify yourself in modest apparel. You understand? Huh? You say something? So you adorn yourself in modest apparel. When you put on your dresses, it doesn't mean come out looking like Harriet Tubman. You're able to beautify yourself. Put on your dress and look beautiful. Just don't show off your curves because that's for who? That's for your husband. That's for your husband, sis. That's for your husband. When you come out the house and you dress and you showing off your skin and stuff, that's only supposed to be for your husband. The Bible wants our women to be discreet, have a level of discretion, how to move, that's how right. to speak. You don't understand? Adorn yourself in modest apparel, read. With shamefacedness and sobriety. It says with shamefacedness and sobriety. A lot of times we can see our women, what are they doing? They in a man's face. They got their chest out. They the loudest in the room. It says with what? Shamefacedness and what? And sobriety. You gotta be sober minded. A lot of our women, we turn to drugs. We turn to alcohol. We turn to all these different things. Why? The Bible says no to be sober minded, read. Not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. Because a lot of women beautify themselves with what? The outward appearance. But the inward, the inward woman is horrible. No discretion, no uh, no know-how, no, no femininity at all. But the outward appearance, you would think that she's the most beautiful woman. But she's a demon the whole time. So what is the Bible commanding our women to do? This is repentance also. You have to change from the inside first. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Oh!